Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and we're back with the Samsung D-Die uh, overclock. So in the previous video, I said I'd just leave a comment if it ran stable, but uh, it, it didn't. But uh, I did eventually manage to stabilize it, so we're now at 500, you know, 550% mem tests, zero errors. So I wouldn't, like, necessarily, like, I, I don't consider this, like, you know, 100% stable, but it's certainly very, very close to being, you know, a, like an overclock that I'd be willing to run 24-7. Uh, um, and yeah, so, you know, um, it ran. Uh, I didn't have to really do anything to the settings. Too, like, I didn't have to do too much to the settings since the, the last video. We just have, uh, you know, same, like, actually the only thing I changed is the TRRDL timing. That's now at 8 instead of 6. Um... That's really the only adjustment I've made um, for stability. Well, the other thing that I did was I put a fan on the memory because um, I have it on an open air test bench. So I just sat a fan on top of it because this stuff is like extremely temperature sensitive and in a really weird, well, yeah, in a really unique way. So normally with say like Samsung B die, um, when it starts getting too hot, you start seeing like more and more and more errors in mem test and then eventually it crashes the same goes for like hynix djr and any of the other like you know memory uh te like temperature sensitive memory ic's out there you initially get like a flood of errors before they outright die um but this stuff will get like one or two errors and then the whole system crashes <laughs> so that is really weird because i've not run into any other memory chip that does that this this is the first one where it really like it gets a little bit too warm, and then the whole thing just collapses immediately. So that is super, super weird, and potentially really annoying for, like, 24-7 operation. Um, it might even be related to the, the, the PCB that these sticks are on, like, because, uh, yeah, you know, like, the thermal tolerance could actually be affected by just this PCB being super down-costed. Um... So, yeah, because the electrical properties of pretty much all materials change slightly with temperature. So, yeah, I guess at these really, like, at these much higher frequencies than what these, these sticks are designed for, um, this might be an issue. But I don't have any, like, like, I don't have a proper, like, I don't have a Samsung D-Die kit that's on a proper PCB to compare against. So it might just be a, a property of the actual memory chips themselves, where if they get too warm, they just, every, you know, everything, uh, they just crash really, really quickly. So, yeah, and that's potentially a very big problem if you have, like, a, a system where, like, your GPU puts out a lot of heat, because you could pass, like, mem test or whatever, and then when you run, like, start playing games or something, your GPU heats up the memory so much that the memory... Like, instead of getting, like, slightly unstable, it just completely crashes the system. Which, like, even the slight instability is a problem. But with this stuff, it feels like, yeah, you really want to make absolutely certain that you test it at your, like, intended worst-case scenario operating temperature. Because if you don't, this stuff seems to just, like, it just stops working completely. Very, very fast. Um, and with little warning as well. Um, so... Yeah, so that's really interesting. So, um, yeah, mem test ran. But, you know, like, I just threw a fan on it and it ran mem test. For temperatures, the sticks were staying, like, below, hour below 30 degrees Celsius. The room is pretty co cold and, you know, they're not running that much voltage. So, yeah, with, with the fan sitting on top of them, they, they do stay quite cool. Um, and that's kind of an unrealistic temperature for a real-world system to achieve. Like, 30 degrees Celsius memory sticks is... I, that's cold. <laughs> like, there's a lot of systems that'll have an internal air temperature that's higher than that. Um, just, you know, if they're playing a video game or something. Um, because of how much heat the GPU kicks off. So, uh, that right there is like, yeah, um, like, it is achievable if you just daily an open air test bench, which is totally doable. I do that. Um, but, uh, yeah, for like a system in a case, this would actually be really annoying to work with, probably. So, yeah, um, this stuff really does seem to be just crazy temperature sensitive for some reason. Um, and yeah, but, you know, here I got it to run mem test, so that's cool. Um, then in terms of timings, it's basically the same thing as before. Um, Geekbench 3 ran, still getting about the same Geekbench 3 score. Time spy is a bit lower. 
Um, and also, I've realized that... So I've, I've been suspicious that this, this time spy score is a bit too low. And I've realized that it is too low. And the reason for that is very, very simple. Um, no, I didn't want core temp. Uh, I wanted CPU-Z. You see, I forgot to turn off the thermal velocity boost clipping system thing, which I don't know why it exists, but it does. Anyway, so CPU, like, I had to turn down, I, uh, while stress testing the memory, I actually turned down the uncore and the core overclock, because I wasn't 100% certain. Because the thing is, when the system just hard crashes like that, very, very suddenly, without a flood of errors, I was like, oh, maybe the cache is crashing, but nah. Um, like, I, I thought maybe the CPU was crashing, but no, it, it wasn't the CPU, it's just the memory is, like, hyper-temperature sensitive, so, um, anyway, but, uh, yeah, I forgot to turn off the thermal, uh, velocity boost, like, clipping system, and so, yeah, the CPU drops to 4.7 gigahertz, <laughs> so that's what's going on with the time supply, so what I wanted to do in this video is also run time supply at actually 5.1 gigahertz, because... Yeah, I'm not pleased with that 13,000. Like, it should be a lot higher than that. So we're going to go fix that. Though, that stock uh, behavior of... Well, that behavior of dropping down to 4.7 gigahertz is actually the stock behavior for these, these CPUs, so... Yeah, it's just not exactly a behavior you want to see with, with a manual overclock. So, anyway, that booted right up, and now we're just going to disable the thermal, uh, th yeah, thermal, uh, frequency clipping, as it's called. Just, like, why doesn't all of this stuff just get turned off on its own? <laughs> anyway, um, you know what, I wonder if it'll even run Time Spy at 5.1. Because previously, it's never actually been running at 5.1 gigahertz. And we're back. We're like, we're booted up. It would be pretty funny if it didn't make it into Windows now. <laughs> Not completely impossible, because the Windows initialization actually hits all of the cores pretty hard. And I need to deal with the capture card again, because of course I do. There we go. So, now let's run Time Spy. I'm kind of worried it's going to crash. Without the thermal clipping turned on. Hmm, doesn't really seem to be that affected. Like, there is an improvement, but it's not... It's not huge. Yeah, it really isn't that much of a difference. Anyway, I, I just want to run some math on that. So 4.7, which is what I think it was running at before, and now it's a 5.1. So 5.1 divided by 4.7, that's about an 8% increase multiplied by 13,000 and, like, 400 points. Um, yeah, so that isn't linear scaling, because if it was linear scaling, we'd be at 14,500 points right now, unless it's, like, massively overheating, which I guess I should have just run it with core temp. Um, and, yeah, that's a version of core temp that has no idea what an 11900K is, but r luckily the thermal diodes still seem to be working the same way. So, the temperature reading is fine.
Actually, that ran better. Okay, no, it's linear. Yeah, it, it did creep up into, like, the 90 degrees Celsius range. But, yeah, that that is a, like, linear improvement in CPU score. So, it is, like... Like, it is memory-bound and CPU frequency-bound, which is kind of... Yeah, it's time spy. That's, that's what you'd expect. Um, anyway, um... Yeah, that's it for the video. Um... Samsung D, uh, Samsung 8 gigabit D die uh, is, uh, you know, even if you get it on sticks rated for just, uh, even if you get it on like 2666 CL19 sticks, you can very easily push them to like 4600. Um, you do have to be definitely want to be careful about the temperatures that they run at. Highly recommend just putting a fan over them um, because, yeah, evidently these are very temperature sensitive. Like, I couldn't get them past 30% until I put a fan on them. Um, and, uh, yeah, but after, you know, after you put a fan on them, like, they, they can sustain these very, very high frequencies quite easily, so, um, well, not very, very high. Very, very high would be, like, over 5,000, but 4,600, like, that's, that's fast. That's, so that's properly, properly fast, and I think, you know, if if I put more time into it, you could probably dial it into even more aggressive settings. Um, I think this stuff kind of scales with voltage, but I'm just not sure how that would affect it for long-term use. So, you know, for long-term use, I'd stick to like 1.4. Uh, for benchmarks, you can go wild. I, I believe it rolls over past like 1.6 volts though, which is not super high voltage tolerance. Anyway... Yeah, that is it for the video, so uh, thank you for watching, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon, there is a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual uh, YouTuber merch. Both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you check them out. And uh, that's it for the video, so thank you for watching, and goodbye. And that's the wrong mouse. This is the right mouse.